playing BYU, right? And I hate that you have a day in between. Obviously, I'm not a hitter, so I don't know how it feels for you guys' body and you guys are setters, but you ran 6-2, Micah. But, like, the day in between, I don't like it because I'm like, let's freaking play this thing. I'm tired of – I'm tired <laughs> just waiting. I'm like, let's play it. I was like, same thing. I got that killer mentality. I was like, I'm going to end these guys' seasons. I'm going to – I'm going to – I was like, they're going to feel what I felt. They're going to – I'm going <laughs> to just think the most violent things against these guys. Great guys, by the way. Great guys. Just BYU as a whole just not liked. But the players are awesome. Right, but the day in between, and again, like some of these guys are like in the weight room, and uh, and like some of these guys are not in the weight room, but like some of these guys are like uh, uh you're in the elevator sharing it with them, and we were just like chilling, we we're just cruising, and we're just hey, what's up or what's up, something kind of like that, and we're just making jokes back and forth. And Kanai, who's actually a BYU transfer, listen to this, he's a freshman this year. He goes in front of the a bunch of the BYU players before the tournament starts. He goes up there. He's like, you guys ready to get your fucking asses kicked? <laughs> And he went, and he, it was his friend zone. It was his Dude, friend. I would hate your team. Well, well, to be honest, it was his friend, so I didn't know about it until he told me. Oh, that's true. Actually, yeah, yeah. if somebody was, was like on my team and did that, then I would kind of understand. It'd kind of be a joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To finish it off here, right? So you have a day in between. I'm just like, dude, I'm tired of freaking waiting. I'm not going to let these fuckers win. I'm not going to let these fuckers win. I'm not going 0 for 2 here. I'm going to... I'm gonna jump off this fucking. <laughs> Actually, no, I'm not gonna make that joke. <laughs> not appropriate joke. But then again, neither of my jokes are. Never are my jokes appropriate. Anyway, so I'm just like waiting. I'm just waiting. I'm like, I'm just like, why? And then think about this, right? In the back of my mind, you're like, okay, we have a two and a half hour flight the day after our championship at four at five, six a.m. and then a ten hour flight from Atlanta to Hawaii. And if you lost that flight. I'm, I, like I said, I'm jumping out of that plane without a parachute. No doubt about that. Like, that's just happening. In mid-flight, I don't even care when the plane takes off. I'm like, I'm not doing that. You know what I'm saying? Like, screw that. So we go, right? And, of course, I look at my phone. We're on the Eastern time because we're in Columbus, Ohio. And I'm like, fuck, dude. They're going to, of course, push the game to the 8 o'clock game so that because we're six hours ahead of Hawaii and we're three, what are we, uh, three hours ahead of West Coast time, so we're like, damn, they're going to push this shit back, bro. For viewing purposes. So we're going. We're feeling good. Actually, we lost our last game. Actually, we practiced, and we lost the game to the B-side <laughs> uh, that day. <laughs> Classic. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. Oh, yeah, and I forgot to tell you. After we beat UCSB, immediately we, we go in. We, we're happy. We're happy. We grab all our stuff, and the UCSB mannequin is gone right after the game. Gone. <laughs> I was like, holy shit, they're on top of their shit. They're, they're wasting no time out here, kid. So anyway, so we go in and I'm waiting, right? So we have certain pass at 12 o'clock. We end at 1.30, we get lunch at like 1.45. So now we have from, we have six, no, from 12 to, and we have, we're chilling at 12 o'clock and at 6 p.m. we have to watch the video. So we have six hours to sit there, right? To think this is it right here. This is the biggest game in my career right here. You know what I'm saying? Make it or break it. I usually waiting for six hours. And me, I can't eat. So I have people ask me on my, what did you eat, libero diet? I was like, bro, I, I, I got a giant sub. I, you know how they divide it in Jersey Mike's and they divide it in four slices. And I'm like, I ate one and a half of those. And usually I pound that thing and like, give me like five minutes and it's done, done. Dude, I couldn't eat. Like, I'm like ready. I'm like, come on. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like my palm. Done, like, like done, done, goodbye. Yeah, goodbye, <laughs> done, done. Season done. Over. Capito, capito. Over. And uh, finito. So, so I'm there, right? And I'm just like, like I'm texting my 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 screen's getting wet because I'm sweating. <laughs> like I'm just like you were like you, you don't see as a nervous before the game and shit. Like I'm just like I'm ready to fucking go. Like I'm like come on. Like I'm trying to get this. I'm trying to get turned out there. Six hours goes by. We go down to film, and I'm just like. I'm like, I'm just in the fucking zone. I'm like, I know what to do. I watched, I watched them what to do before. I was like, I know how to handle it. We knew that if we serve tough, serve receive well, we're gonna be fine. We're gonna smoke them. And apparently, the 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 what's it called the people the who are the people the commentators had BYU had an edge over us. I was like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about, kid? Anyway, I I, I don't know why. Anyway, so we go into the game, right? I'm in the fucking zone. I'm ready to end some people's seasons, right? Just me, us and BYU mannequins there. We're ready to go. We're fired up. We've been here before. It's our time to shine. Let's get it. You know what I'm saying? But what I learned in the last national championship, even though you feel entitled, even though it's a storybook ending, 
that doesn't always happen. A lot of times it doesn't if you just don't take it by the balls and go. So we go out there, right? We're fired up. We're ready to go. I'm like, whew, calm. Whew. And for those of you wondering, again, the questions on the Instagram, how passing was easier or how in pressure situations, you do it over and over again where it becomes comfortable in pressure situations. Again, with these guys, I'm lucky enough to be in pressure situations a lot and comfortable enough to be doing it a lot. So it's it's routine again and again and again. Obviously, in the back of your mind, you're like, okay, you got to make it happen right here, right? So we're like, okay, we just got to pass well. And apparently, I didn't know this until after the game, Gabby was three aces away from hitting the, the BYU record. <laughs> and uh, he didn't get a single ace for us. Not one. I mean, he, like I said, he got two two from me that I shanked to the left side of the court and the one at the right side of the court. But it wasn't an ace. And so we were like, whoo. Anyway. Held him off. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to be like, oh, yeah, I got gas. <laughs> like, I'm not going to go ahead and say that. But uh, just not letting him get an ace is something of a good stuff for the passers. And we handle the rest of the passers anyway. So anyway, so we go in there. We're starting. We go down 2-0, per usual, our usual thing. We go down, right? We start bringing it back. We're balling, we're balling, we're balling. I just kept pumping guys up. And at this point, I didn't realize this until the beginning of the game. Beginning of the game, I had no energy. And I started yelling because I hadn't eaten anything the day. And, and like, and usually I can do that, but for like two or three days in a row, that's kind of tough. I'm just yelling. And then I have to tr- go down to my knees kind of and put my head down and close my eyes because I have a raging headache and I'm about to faint. And I <sighs> calm down. I'm back into it. I'm back into it. So then we go, play well, we're getting into it. And we knew we had to beat, as I, I combined the names, to uh, Gabi Day, Garcini, <laughs> the two pins on the outside, right? Basically what happens is our boys start serving well. We start passing nails. We start running the middle. We start running the right side. Rattle play well. Everyone play well. We're just doing our thing, running that big. You know how it be, baby. Come on now. So we're doing it all. And then I remember I'm off the court. It's like they're up 2019 or something, or 2019 all or something like that. Gardini hits the big out of bounds. We get it. We move, we move, we move, we move. Up, 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 up. We start, we end up the game. And we're getting pumped. We're hyped. Let's go, boys. Second game comes around. We're going. We're hyped, we're hyped, we're hyped. And I remember I could see it. I could see the little shakiness on their side. And I'm like, and I just remember the call timeout. I just kept yelling. And, like, at this point, I was yelling so much and so loud where my voice wasn't, like, sometimes it just cut off, like, just cut because I couldn't get it out at that frequency and that loudness. I was like, I just kept yelling. I was like, smell the blood, boys. You fucking smell that shit. They're fucking nervous over there, boy. And I just kept yelling, and I just kept just, just yelling, 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 yelling. I was like, and them, and them. And I just kept going crazy. And then everyone was just, everyone was just like, first, they're shocked in, 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 in the timeout. They're like, and they're like, okay, yeah. And <laughs> I'm like, yeah, let's go. And we're all just getting bumped, right? We had them quickly second set. Bam. Right? They're having struggle passing. We just kept bombing. And we just kept, I just kept, I was like, they're getting nervous, boys. I was like, you smell that? I just kept, not to them. They couldn't hear. Just to my boys. And I, well, the one thing I love to do, I don't know what the cameras show this. I like to pump my boys up. For example, like Cole gives a kill. Just flexes a little. Shows his muscles. And when he goes back to serve one time, I chase him, right? I get bringing everyone together. I was like, ah. I go chase him at the end line. I'm like, show me those muscles again. Show me those muscles again. Come on. I, and I grab his fucking muscle. And he just fucking goes, ah. Like, Roddy's about to go serve. I'm like, let's go. And I'm just like, so my job is just get everyone hyped at this point, right? Hyped at this point. Micah, you're, you're covering your face right now. Dude, I'm telling you, bro, I, I do the best at getting everyone hyped on the team. I think I take, I think I take that, like, award. Because, like, I love getting my boys hyped. That's my thing to do. Like, I'm like, the one thing, I, I go to Patrick, he hits over him, and I just go. And I'm like, obviously, I'm looking like three feet above me. I'm like, where are they? Where are they? Like, where are they? I can't see them, Patrick. And I just grab him by the jersey, and I just bring him close to my face. And, and Rado usually turns to me, he's like, where? Who? Who? I was like, them. Where are they? He's like, who's them? I was like, they. Them. He's like, where are they? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we just keep going back and forth and back and forth. <laughs> like, for those of you who's like, they see me and Rattle grab each other and say, we're just doing shit like that. Like, that, that, that's the dialogue we're going back and forth and do it, right? It's good times. We're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it. And people are like, okay, it was boring at home to watch. You guys watched it. I'm sure it wasn't as exciting. But here's the thing. 
when you're in the Nash Championship, right, it doesn't, like, and they have Gabby Garcia going back there to serve at, I don't care if it's like seven, 16 at 22 or 23. It, it doesn't feel like, oh, okay, like, oh, we got this in the bag. Like, it's a big lead. It feels like, like, it's still close. Like, it, like, it feels that way. And it was 16-24. And here's the thing about the Nash Championship point. It never really hit me. Like, it wasn't like, okay, one more point in the Nash Championship. It was just like, one more point. But it wasn't like, oh, and I could feel the surge hitting me. You know what I'm saying? Not that it wasn't what I was looking for. I was like, one more point in the Nash Championship. Like, let's do this. But it wasn't hitting me. You know what I'm saying? Right? They get a kill. Jacob serves. They get a kill. Then we go to two-man serve receive. I go. I pass. Patrick sets. Boom. Kill. We win the Nash Championship. I turn. I do the kind of the the are you not entertained the crowd with my arms out for like a second. Spiros comes. First guy I see. He jumps on me. We're living life. After the game, I go from I go from uh, uh, crying for like ten seconds to yes, and then the crying for like ten seconds. Yes, I'm good. We did it. We finally did it. I pointed my mom in the crowd. Every after every game, I pointed my mom to the crowd. After every time I came on the bench, I pointed my mom to the crowd, and she pointed right back at me. I was like, I just want to show her I love her. I just want to show her mad love on the podcast too. And after every time, I always do. And like after we won. It was a freaking crazy show because everyone realized what we had done. But the biggest thing is, like I said, we have a lot of hoarders on our team. So everyone started taking stuff from the event, like everyone. So we end, right? They come in with the trophies. They come in with the trophy. They come in with the hats and the shirt, right? I think I'm the first one to grab on. I grab on, put it on. But then after the ceremonies happen, it turns to a madhouse. Everyone realizes, okay, we need to grab something. But five players go, and they sprint straight to the corner. And I just see them loading balls in their shirt and just grabbing them and putting them with them, just grabbing, like, the balls, the official balls that we used. And then, all of a sudden, people realized, wait a minute, this is sport court. You can take the sport court. So then everyone just go, starts running to our side into the corners and just starts ripping them, like, ah, oh, going crazy. Sport courts get ripped. I see some sport courts, a handful, they're like half ripped. Like the half of them. I'm like, what is our team doing? But they ended up taking them, and everyone gets a bunch of sport court. There's some guys with like 10 pieces of a sport court. I'm sure if we all formed, took our took our thing in a sport court, we all formed one, we could form a court, or at least a half a court, because it was crazy. It was madness. Some guys came home with like 12 pieces. Then, they're like, okay, we got to cut the net. They're like, okay. So we all get scissors. And then when the people realize there's a 2021 and say championships on the scissors. So now they're pocketing scissors. So they're cutting the net, getting a bunch of the net. Some guys cut like an entire section of row of their net, huge. And they pocket the scissors because it says NCAA 21 championships. And then people are like, there's confetti on the ground. We need confetti. So they start grabbing confetti, this plastic golden confetti, and they just start putting in their pants and putting in their pockets. I'm like, what the hell is going on? It's mad and start throwing in the crowd. And then, this is my favorite of all time. Oh, no, there's two more. I'm talking to John Costi, and he looks at one of the players. He's like, what the hell is that guy doing over there? And I turn and I look, and one of our players is taking a broom, like not even a new broom, but an old Ohio State broom with him. He's just holding it. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm grabbing this. I'm going home. I was like, do you want me to tell him not to take that home? He's like, yeah, that's kind of Ohio State property. So I had to go over. I'm like, buddy, buddy, buddy. I'm not going to reveal names. He's like, buddy, buddy, buddy. You can't take that. He's like, wow, no, I'm taking it. I'm taking it. I'm definitely taking this. I'm like, my man, that's Ohio State property. But he was literally going to take an Ohio State broom home. Then, this is my favorite of all time. Cole decides to take a whole ass antenna. He grabs the antenna from the thing. And obviously, if you don't play volleyball, you're not going to have a very good idea of what the hell an antenna is. So he started, started taking it. And like, he's like, yeah, can I check this in? Try to take, check it in. And people were like, what the hell is it? Do I count as a bag or not? He carries his dang antenna from Columbus, Ohio, then Atlanta, Georgia, all the way to Hawaii. And he got it all there. And he had it in a parade and started shaking the antenna. He's going crazy. I remember walking. I remember I was asleep on one of the planes. And this and the flight attendant, for some reason, I had the antenna walking down the row. She's like, she's from South, and she's like, she's like, yeah, some some person wants a spear to be boarded on this plane. <laughs> I just like laugh, like, oh my god, what a bunch of, 
what a bunch of idiots. But yeah, it was just total madhouse, and we we enjoyed every second of it.